Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my studio. This is Paint with Love Joy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If this is your first time here, please hit the subscribe button and check out my other videos on the channel. If this is your third or fourth video that you've checked out, thanks so much for your support and I'm really glad you're getting creative at home. Uh, really proud of you for doing that as well. So in this video, this is going to be geared towards my beginner painters. Um, so those of you that just want to keep getting comfortable with painting, maybe explore some new subjects, explore more blending and some of the basics, um, these are good videos for you to utilize. With that being said, you have full permission to change out any colors or change anything about the video or about the painting process. Um, that's the great part about creativity. You get to kind of make it your own. So what you're going to see in the description box below is what I call a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit are the basic supplies that you need to paint at home. So use what you have at home, but if you need to grab some new stuff or you like what I'm using in the video, you can use that link um, just kind of as a guide for what you'll get there. Another thing that you're gonna see is something that I call a traceable, and there's a link in the description box below for that as well. And a traceable is a way for my first time and beginner painters to get the initial composition on the canvas before you even start painting. And there is also gonna be a link for a video on how to transfer your traceable. So check out both of those um, and get your initial composition on the canvas and then jump into the process of painting. When you're ready to kind of take your skills to the next level, check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com. And I've got a few um, advanced beginners, some intermediate classes on there, and my signature paint your pet classes on there, as well as my intro to palette knife scraping. Both you will learn a lot, and you'll learn some core foundational art skills in both of those courses. So please keep evolving your skills, keep painting, keep getting creative. Try to find a monthly outlet for yourself. I recommend that for everyone. All right, so I think that's enough talking right now. Let's go ahead and jump into the process of painting. Okay guys, it's gonna be another fun painting, part of the Inspiring Women series, so honoring nurses and doctors out there. So grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now what you're gonna see on mine is there's a black outline. I went over mine with a black Sharpie marker over my traceable, and that's more for those of you at home that are gonna draw what you see. So if you're utilizing the traceable, um, you don't have to do the black Sharpie lines. So we are starting with that uh, large flat brush. I'm demonstrating a few different brush strokes to try right now. So try all three of those. I'll be doing more of the X marks. And we're just going to do shades of pink. You know, um, it doesn't have to be exact. And we're going to be mixing the color a couple of times. So this is just, we're going for fun variety. We're actually going to have where we add a little bit more red. It'll be a darker pink. And if you use white with just a tiny amount of the red in there, you'll get a really light pink. So try just kind of playing with all three different shades, a medium pink, a light pink, and a dark pink. And like I said earlier, um, try all three of those brush strokes. And I'm using the kind of X marks or hatch mark uh, pattern as I apply the paint. Now I am using that large flat brush and I'm using student grade paint. So I'm applying my paint a little bit thicker just because it's a bit on the transparent side. Um, and if you're, you have paint like that, um, do the same thing. You can apply it thicker or you can apply two coats. Now when we do the skin tone on this nurse, nurse we're actually going to be doing two layers of it because my paint is, like I said, on the transparent side. All right, so you guys are doing a great job filling up that background with shades of pink. If you are holding your breath, remember to breathe. Just relax. I'm really proud of you for stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit and painting at home. If you are painting on a stretched canvas, I do recommend that you carry this color around the sides, top, bottom, left, and right. And here you can see where I grabbed some red and slapped it right on the background. This is called wet on wet blending. So you can kind of change the shade. You can do it with white as well or even a new color. 
Um, and just kind of play with your background. Do everything that you want to your background now while the paint is wet, and then um, you can let it dry and we'll move on to the next step. And if you even feel like switching out colors, if you would have preferred this in blue or purple or green, anything you want, feel free to switch out colors for anything on today's painting and really any of my paintings on my channel. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. We're going to make a light teal next and we're going to start with white. And again, a little bit of teal goes a long way. Um, these are going to be for the scrubs for the nurse and the, um, the cross, the plus sign. Um, on her headdress. So if you again, if you want to switch out colors, go right ahead and do that. Um, so here we're going to be laying a base of the kind of it's really kind of a medium to light teal. Your call if it's a little darker or lighter than what I have, completely okay. Um, but we're going to fill up her entire scrubs, um, and then we'll be grabbing uh, the direct teal and doing the wet on wet blending. So we'll put some shadows in there to define the scrubs and then we'll put some highlights in there with white. So we're going to be building on our skills today. So it is actually a good painting for my first time painters to kind of get comfortable with mixing your paint and doing a little bit of blending. And I encourage all my students try to find multiple outlets um, on a regular basis that are creative for yourself. It's just good overall. All right, so you saw that I wiped the brush off. Now we're grabbing that direct teal, and I'm just using kind of the tip of the brush. If you want to, you can sw switch down to the pointy brush, um, and we're placing that dark teal where I want it, and then we're going to go back, and with light pressure, we're going to blend that darker teal into the medium teal. And again, light pressure. With a little bit more pressure, your brush strokes show up, different type of blending. And for my first time in beginner painters, you're just getting comfortable with how you make these gradients with the pressure of your brush, uh, with transforming a white surface into your final painting. Um, so be kind to yourself as you go through this process. Your brain's taking in a lot of information. All right, so now we're going to grab that white, kind of put the highlight on there. And again, placing that white paint where I want it, and then with light pressure, kind of blending it into the base color. Again, remember to breathe as you do this. If you find that your brush is kind of shaky as you go to apply the paint or go to do your blending, that means you're holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, um, that will help with your process. All right, so I did grab the pointy brush um, to fill in with the medium teal or light teal um, for the uh, decal on her headdress, the cross. And then we'll be using the direct heel to give it a bit of a drop shadow. All right, and it's looking good. Don't forget to take your progress pictures, even if I don't recommend to say pause the video here and do it. Um, it's really, it's a nice way to kind of document your um, creative progress, your creative evolution. All right, so here again, just uh, grabbing that direct teal. And as you work with any of the brushes, but especially the pointy brush, you want to kind of play with your pressure. Light pressure is going to create a skinnier line. More pressure is going to create a bit of a whiter line. And in your beginning stages of learning, just kind of play with that. You're getting comfortable. Your muscles are remembering what it feels like each time that you paint. And that's why practice is rather important. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. We're going to move back up to the medium flat brush, and we're going to do the skin tone. And I'm going to be doing a mixture of raw sienna and burnt sienna. And I will be doing two layers on this because my paint is rather transparent, and I want a more opaque coverage. So I'm getting the first layer down right now. Um, you are more than welcome, like I said earlier, to change colors. So if you want to do a different skin tone, um, Feel free with the different uh, colors that you could mix. So you can try what we're using here. Or if you want to start with a lighter, you can start with white and add the raw sienna to it to get a little tan. You can always add a little bit of yellow to that to warm it up. Um, if you have a bit more of pearl or um, uh, porcelain skin, start with white and add a tiny, tiny amount of red and possibly even a touch of yellow. So just kind of play around with um, the skin tone that you want to add to yours. Um, if you want to go darker than this, you can start with either the raw sienna and add a little bit of black to it, or you can start with the burnt sienna and add a little bit of black to it. 
All right. <laughs> so as we I was talking, I filled in most of this, the face except for the eyes. And here I'm trying to apply it a little bit thicker, but it's not successful. Um, you know, the canvas is starting to shine through in the brush stroke. So I'll end up, um, that's why I want to do the second coat. So we're also going to do the arms in a moment down by the bottom of the canvas. And if you need to switch back and forth between the different brushes, go right ahead and do that. Oh, I think I forgot about the arms here. So this is going to be the color for the lips. So I'm taking the raw sienna and adding a little bit of red to it. Um, and that kind of gives it, uh, warms it up and makes it a nice uh, lip color. This we will also do a second round on as well. And here was the point when I realized I forgot to do the arms. So going back to the same color and filling in the skin tone on the arms. Then we'll be moving over to black and the hair. Again, full permission to change uh, the hair, change the color, change anything about any of these paintings. It's just important that you paint. That's the successful part of painting. All right, pause the video, take your progress photo. I'm sticking with that same middle flat brush and just the straight black paint. Um, this will also get a second coat as well. And that's one thing that you'll notice between your different um, brands of paint. Some are have a better coverage, some are a little bit runnier, some dry faster. So um, as you get more and more into your creative world, you'll find specific tools and brands that you like. So don't be afraid to try different brands or different things um, so you can figure out what you like and what you want to purchase um, as you continue your exploration. All right, and <clears throat> still kind of applying that paint kind of thick. And if you need to, um, you see a few times as I'm applying it, I'm kind of holding that brush at a 45 degree angle. And that helps apply the paint a little bit thicker. A lot of times the brush strokes show up when we um, hold the brush a little more perpendicular to the canvas and have a little more pressure. That's more of an expressive and even uh, more of your brush strokes show up. So to apply it thicker, so that way you have more opaque coverage, kind of coming in at that 45 degree angle and kind of, I tell my students like icing a cake, um, just allows you to apply it a little bit thicker. And during your beginning stages of painting, you're just getting comfortable with how to hold the brush, the different angles, the pressure of it. Um, your learning in creativity and painting can be rather exponential in the beginning stages. And that's like kind of what makes it addicting. All right, another place to pause your video and uh, take your progress photo. I do recommend letting this fully dry. And now we're moving into just direct white paint. I didn't have anything on her um, nurse's hat. So we're applying uh, just white paint so that way we have a base on there and something on the canvas. Again, change colors if you feel uh, like you want to. All right, and then we will be going back to the skin tone, applying that second coat, and then we'll do a little bit of wet on wet blending to where we put a lighter color, the raw sienna, on the left side of the face. And then we'll go back and do the hair and a few little details, and that will be the conclusion of the painting. You guys are doing great. All right, so making that mixture again, whatever you used for the skin tone, make that mixture a second time, and you can notice just how much better it looks, how much more opaque and better coverage it is with a second coat. Now, as you get more and more into your creative process I, and you start off with student grade paint, like we're using here in the video, I do recommend that every, maybe just try one or two colors, maybe your main colors, white and black and do a grayscale painting. Um, but step up and try the little bit more expensive artist grade paint. Um, it's usually much better quality, um, really nice to blend with, much better coverage, more opaque, and then that way um, you can just realize the joy and benefits of working with a kind of thicker medium and nice materials as you continue your exploration. All right, so here we're actually going to put a bit of a shadow on there. So I grabbed a little bit of the burnt sienna, and we're going to be placing that underneath the neck on the right hand side and on the um, on the each ears, each ear, <laughs> and on the right hand side of the face. Uh, for the arms, it's going to be on the inside as if they would be casting a shadow um, or 
having a shadow from your arms next to your body. All right, and as you watch the video, you are observing the place that I put each of these colors and the kind of the general shape that I make. So you are strengthening your power of observation as you watch the video and then apply it to your canvas. And that's a big part of the art uh, exploration process is your power of observation. All right, looking good. Now we're gonna grab the raw sienna and put it on the left-hand side of our face, kind of a bit of a highlight. And again, I'm still kind of sticking with those little X marks, brush strokes, or little dots, but if you're finding something that's kind of comfortable, uh, stick with that. And if you need to, you can wipe off some of that excess paint and then you go back and kind of smooth it. Um, the more that you paint, the more you'll kind of find your groove with mixing paint at variable speeds and at variable dry times and thickness. And that's why your practice is important. All right, so going back to the lip colors, and that was the raw sienna with a little bit of red in there. And again, I really like how this second coat um, just gives it a more opaque feel. All right, and then I did grab some of that direct raw sienna, and right at the split um, where the lips meet, putting a line and then blending with light pressure that raw sienna into the upper lip. We're going to take some white in a moment right here and we're going to apply it just below that raw sienna line and then blend that a little bit um, into the bottom lip. And then right at the peak of each of the top lips, you can add a little bit of white highlight. All right, so now going back to the black, we're going to actually first outline um, the nurse's uh, scrubs. And again, play with your pressure. If you need to, you can put your pinky out, use that as kind of your pivot point. Or what I'm doing in the video and you can't see is I'm resting my forearm against the edge of the table. And again, remember to breathe, um, exhale as the brush touches the canvas and you will be less shaky as you make these lines. And if you have um, a thick part of a line and a skinny part of the line, that's okay. That's just where you're painting for today. You will get more uh, comfortable with your brush and better brush control with practice. All right, so now moving back into the hair, I'm gonna put a second layer of black on there. And then we're actually gonna use the pointy brush with a little bit of white and um, kind of just do some little swirl highlights for her curly hair. So first going around um, the nurse's hat with the black, just kind of sharpening the edges, sharpening the edges on the uh, around the face. So if you want, it is okay to let it dry after you do the second layer of the skin tone and then do um, your black. All right, you guys are doing a great job. Like I said earlier, don't wait too long to do your next painting and just keep building on your skills. Um, I've found in all the years that I've taught, um, my students just get really relaxed during the process of painting. And that's a beautiful thing to see. Uh, this world is way more stressed out and crazy, crazier than I would like it to be. So I'd like to see some more calm and relaxed people. And creativity is a wonderful path to get there. And if you've tried painting and you don't like it, try something else. Try watercolors, try music, try dance, anything, but just find a creative outlet for yourself. All right, another place to pause your video, take your progress photo, and I'm you can let this the black dry or you can do, do what I'm doing and jump right into doing the highlights. So we're going to make kind of a medium gray and you'll see that I make a light gray and then have to add a little bit more to it. Um, totally okay to adjust as you get to the color that you're looking for. Oh, I forgot about her stethoscope actually. That's what we're doing. <laughs> so um, just observe the shape. It'll be easier to see when my hand is not in the way but doing kind of that breast uh, cancer uh, survivor ribbon design or a cursive L. I haven't written in cursive in a long time. Um, and then we're gonna do uh, just the curve that's gonna go around the neck and then we'll do a circle on the left hand side. Again, if you wanna change colors on this or do a different design, go right ahead. All right, so doing the left-hand side and then doing a circle. If it ends up being a larger circle than you anticipated, just embrace it. And we're going to 
to do a little uh, circle on the inside of this, leaving a little bit of space. If you end up not leaving space, totally okay. You can paint the darker gray over it next. So adding more black to the medium gray mixture. And we're going to put kind of the um, ear pieces on for the stethoscope. And then we'll do a circle around. Actually, I don't know what that part of the stethoscope is called, the listening device. <laughs> And then a shadow kind of underneath on the right hand side and on the there we go right hand side use light pressure remember to breathe if you need to clean the brush and reapply your paint go right ahead and do that all right and we're going back to black i forgot to outline the lips so again light pressure and since this is a smaller space if it is very frustrating for you um, let your painting fully dry and you can do this with a Sharpie marker. But make sure your paint is dry before you do the Sharpie marker. And I forgot to do the arms. So sometimes that happens in painting. You forget to do a few things. It is totally okay to go back and add what you need. So then we're going to clean the brush white paint. This is going to be going on the left hand side compared to uh, the, basically the opposite side from where the shadow was, the darker gray. And this just kind of creates the hint of a, a 3D object as we get these uh, three values on there. And the more that you paint, the more you'll be exposed to uh, your value scale and painting in light and shadows. <laughs> All right, and the last spot that we're going to take the white is going into the hair and the black is still wet. So this is going to diffuse a little bit, but I'm just kind of doing almost little squiggles. Um, little circles, light pressure, part of the paint's being picked up, part of it's not. Some of it is mixing with the black and kind of creating uh, various shades of gray. So just kind of play with this. You can reload and grab a little bit more white if you want. Um, you can even introduce other colors here, maybe some different highlights in the hair. All right, guys, thanks so much for painting with me today. Don't wait too long to do the next one. And until then, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you really like how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for going through the process. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy and definitely email me your photos, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, share this with your community. When I post your photos on social media, it encourages so many other people that are scared to paint it encourages them to give it a try. So you are really important in helping other people uh, tap into their own creativity. So please share with your community. Um, with that being said, again, when you wanna take your skills to the next level, check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com uh, and check out that Paint Your Pet course. Because when you paint something that you love, you learn more, you put a little more energy into it and you're pretty much pleased with the results. So give that a try. Um, so I'm really grateful that you took time out of your day to hang out with me and get creative. Don't wait too long to do your next painting. And I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers.